welcome. I am so excited to show you how to knit my worsted weight Wildwood V-neck sweater vest. This is the perfect piece for fall. Right now in Chicago, it is still in the 90s, so I've been wearing this with a short sleeves tee, and I've also kind of just been wearing it as a tank top, but it is the perfect piece for fall. You can wear it with a t-shirt, you can wear it with nothing underneath, you can wear it with a jacket in the winter once it gets a little cooler. I used this Lion Brand Heartland yarn. This color is so pretty. All of the supplies, everything you will need for the pattern, for making the pattern, is listed in the pattern or in the video description. You can click the link in the video description, grab a copy of the pattern either on Etsy or on Ravelry, and you'll see all the list of supplies there. And you can follow along with me as I make this sweater vest with you. All right, guys, I am walking you through how to knit my Wildwood Pullover V-neck sweater vest here. I am starting the instructions for this vest after I have completed knitting the body because this vest is worked the exact same way um, you work the super bulky version of the vest, which I already have a video for. So if you need help figuring out how to cast on stitches, complete the one by one ribbing, and then knit in the round for the body, please reference that video. I've got it linked here. I've got it linked in the video description. So basically you cast on your stitches, you complete one by one rib for a certain length, and then you knit stockinette stitch for a certain length for the body. So that's where I'm starting this video. Video. Again, if you need help and you want to see how I joined in the round and did everything, please jump over to the other video and then when it's time to work the back, you can jump back over to this video. So I have completed my body. I, you start measuring from the cast on edge to the top of the work. The work, the pattern will tell you how long to complete the body for, for your size. For reference, I am knitting a size three in the video. So there are eight sizes for the vest. So when you reference the pattern, you wanna look, if you're knitting the size three, I look at the third number in the row of all of the eight numbers together. So that just tells you how to read the pattern. All right, so we are going to start working the back of the, the body. So you, you work the body in the round, and then when it's time to work the back, we're gonna start working back and forth. So we're no longer going to be knitting in the round. So we're gonna start the first row of the back, and we're gonna work across a certain amount of stitches, and then we're gonna separate out the front stitches. So right now, again, everything is in the round. We're gonna start working across the back, and then we're going to, going to place the front stitches on a piece of waist yarn or a knitting extension cord, and then we're gonna work back and forth flat to work the back, okay? I'll show you exactly what I mean, but visually, we've been working in the round. Now we're just going to work back and forth half of the stitches for the back, and then we will do the left and the right fronts, and then we'll seam at the top. All right, so let's get started. So for the back, for the very first row here, I'm just going to slip my stitch marker here and begin working my back. I'm going to knit six stitches. You knit across six stitches, and then you're going to do a slip one, knit one, pass the slipped stitch over, and this is abbreviated by an SKP. So that SKP abbreviation means slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over. So this will give us a left leaning decrease. And this is how you work the slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over. Slip one, knit one, pass that slip stitch over. And that gives us a left leaning decrease. Now you're gonna knit across the number of stitches you're supposed to knit for for your size. Okay, so I've, I've worked across the number of stitches I am supposed to work across. So I knit my sti six stitches. I did my slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over. I knit across the back. 
And then now I'm at the point where I am going to do a knit two together to make the right leaning decrease to go the other way. And then I knit to the end, knits, I'm sorry, knit six, two, three, four, five, six. So now I have worked all the way across my back. Again, knit six stitches, SKP, work across the back, do your decrease again, and knit six stitches. So we've worked the first row of our back. Okay, so now, now we've worked across the back. Now it's time to move the remaining front stitches, which will be the stitches that are still on the needle all the way to the beginning of round marker here. Okay, so all of these stitches now are the front stitches and we need to move these off the needles so we can just work the back back and forth. So I'm gonna take one of my knitting extension cords. I've got these available for you guys in my Etsy shop. Um, when I've got them, they will be linked in the video description, but these things are great. If you don't have these, definitely think about grabbing some. They're a really handy dandy tool. They connect to the end of the needle and you can slide the stitches off. If you don't have them, it's fine. You can use a piece of scrap yarn and um, a tapestry needle and just slide the stitches off using a needle instead. But let me show you how to use these extension cords. They're great. This is my smallest size. Um, I like to use a small size because it just um, it's, makes the stitches slide off pretty easily. So I am now moving. I've worked across the back. So these are my front stitches. So I am just literally sliding all of these stitches off very carefully. You make sure you really shove this in here to the end of your needle. These, this is my smallest diameter. Um, it fits needles that are pretty small. So um, I am just literally sliding these off. This is so fast and so easy and great to do. So I am going to slide all of these stitches off. And then when I get to the beginning of round marker here, I am just gonna make sure I stop sliding them over. So I've got the last stitch on here. And got the last stitch on, I'm gonna remove it carefully. And now I can just pull this through. And I've got all of my stitches being held on this knitting extension cord now. So slide your needle through here. We just have worked across the front, so our yarn is over here. So now we're gonna work back and forth. We have been working in the round. Now it's time to work back and forth. So I'm just gonna get my stitches slid back on here. And I'm just going to now turn the work and work back. So all I'm gonna do when I work back is purl all of the way across. So you simply purl this row all the way to the end. All right, finishing up my second row here of just straight purling all the way across. I'm gonna turn the work again. And now we're going to work a row two on the right side, which is the knit six. SKP, knit to eight stitches before the end, knit two together, knit six. So that looks like this. Knit six. SKP, slip one, knit one pass the slip stitch over. So we've decreased and we've got a left leaning decrease. And now you can see this should line up with the decrease, the very first decrease we just did on the right side before. So now we've got the work leaning over to the left. Then you knit across until you get to eight stitches before the end. All right, so I've knit across now until I have eight stitches left. Making sure you can see. 
two, four, six, eight. Now we're going to do a knit two together. So we knit two stitches together like this. And then you knit to the end. So now you've completed two decrease rows and I'll show you what they look like now. So now we've got a right leaning decrease going on here and we have a left leaning decrease going on over here. Basically the work will start to curve in like this. We're decreasing in for the armholes here. So we need a right leaning decrease, a le I'm sorry, a left leaning decrease on this side and a right leaning decrease on this side. So then you're just gonna turn the work and purl back. And then you're gonna keep repeating these last two rows, rows two and three, until you have a certain amount of stitches left that your pattern notes for your size. And I just wanted to show you what it's starting to look like. I've completed three decrease rows and I've purled back so you can see. Um, let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit. So it's one decrease and then the purl row, two decreases and then the purl row, three decreases and I purl back. So you can see that everything's starting to lean to the left here. And then on this side, everything is starting to lean to the right. So if you are doing the decreases in the right position, it'll look really neat like this. So keep going until you get to the number of decreases or the number of stitches that you're supposed to work for your size. Finishing up my last row here of my decreases, I just purled back. All right, so now I've completed the number of decreases I'm supposed to complete for my size. I have the right amount of stitches I'm supposed to have for my size and now you can see how the back is coming together nicely. So now that we've finished our decreases, it's time to just knit stockinette stitch straight. So we've gone in and now we're just going to knit straight, no decreases. So your pattern will tell you how long to knit stockinette stitch. The work will tell you how long to complete stockinette stitch from the armhole, from the underarm here. So this is the point where we started decreasing. So you'll continue to work until the whole thing measures that specific length from the underarm. So when you knit stockinette stitch flat, meaning back and forth, we just knit on the right side of the work all the way across and we purl all the way back on the wrong side of the work. So I will see you back here when I have knit stockinette stitch to the length I'm supposed to knit for my size, my size three. All right, so now I have finished the back to the length that I am supposed to complete it to from the underarm for my size. So you measure again from, from the underarm, right where the underarm starts to the top of the work all the way to the top of the work, and that's how long um, the work should be before it's time for you to bind off, and we're gonna bind off on the right side of the work. Okay, so we've completed the back um, after a wrong side, so we are going to bind off on the right side of the work, and I am just going to do a standard bind off here which will make it easier to seam in my opinion. So let's bind off the entire back now on the right side. So we just knit a stitch, knit the second stitch, and then pull that first stitch over the stitch we just knit. So we just bound off one stitch. So now you just knit a stitch and lift that first stitch over the stitch we just knit. And you continue this all of the way across. So the work starts to look like this as you bind off. So I'll show you what to do when you get to the end. I've got one more stitch to bind off here. I'm going to lift that stitch over. Now I'm gonna cut a tail. Cut a 
I don't know, like five or six inch tail. And I'm going to pull this through. And now I've bound off for the back. So the top of the back looks like this now. And now it's time to begin the left front. And that means we will have to take the left front stitches and put them back on the needle. So when I say left front, so our vest is upside down right now. I'm gonna just lift my stand up here so you can see a little bit better. So you know what I'm talking about. A lot of people get confused. What's the left front and what's the right front? So the left front of the vest will be the left front as if you were wearing this. So this is the back right now. So this will be the left front because if I was wearing this, it would be on my left side and this side would be the right front. So if I put the work this way, the left front would be over here and the right front would be over here. So I am going to start by placing my front stitches, my left front stitches back on my needle. And the pattern will tell you how many stitches you should put back on the needle. It should be half of the stitches that are sitting on your knitting extension cord here. So what you're gonna wanna do is slowly, you can reconnect. If you're using a knitting extension cord, you can just reconnect the extension cord here. And you can start to pull this through and make sure you pick up the number of stitches you need to pick up for your size. So I'm just pushing this work here over. So I'm just sliding this back on my work as I go. Making sure I know how many stitches are on. Okay. Now I'm going to gently remove that extension cord and just pull it back through. So now I've got my left front stitches on my needle and I've got my right front stitches still sitting on this knitting extension cord. So I've got all my stitches on. I'm actually going to slide the needle through because we are going to join the work at the underarm here. So if we're looking at the vest, the V-neck will be here. This is where the front, the left and the right front will split. So we're actually gonna start at the underarm here. So I need my needle to be all the way through so I can join the work on the right side at the underarm. So to join the work, I'm simply going to take my yarn and start knitting with it. It will be a little loose at the beginning, but it'll tighten up as we go and you can continue to pull. So we're gonna start following the directions for the left front. We're going to begin the underarm decreases and the V-neck decreases at the same time. So we will have a decrease here on this side for the underarm that will mimic what we've already done on the back and that will be on every right side row. And we will have a V-neck decrease on this end of the work every other right side row because the V-neck decrease is less steep than the underarm decrease. So we don't need to do it as often. You don't need to worry about that, but I just like to explain why the pattern's written the way it is. If you simply just follow the directions of the pattern, it'll turn out the way it's supposed to turn out. You're going to do the same thing we did for the decreases on the other side. We're going to knit six. And I simply just start knitting and I'm holding the tail. One, two, three, four, five, six, and you can pull this tail here. And now we're gonna do the same thing we did the before where we do our slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over. And now you're gonna continue across until you have three stitches left. These decreases will be a little bit different at the V-neck. So you're gonna work all the way until you have three stitches left on this row. 
All right, I've got three stitches left. Now I'm gonna do my knit two together, knit one. So we've just, now we're just making our decrease a little bit closer to the end on our V-neck. Now we're gonna turn the work and simply purl back. Almost finished purling across. This is where I've joined the work, so you might need to pull this again. So we've just finished a row one and a row two. On row one, we decreased on both sides, this side and this side. We purled back for row two. And now for a row three, we're just making a decrease at the beginning of the row. So you're just going to knit across six. Do your SKP and knit to the end, knit all the way to the end. You will not be making a decrease at the V-neck on this row, row three. Finishing up a row three here, I'm about to turn the work. And now I am going to purl back for a row four. All right, I've just finished my row four. So I'm turning the work now. And I've completed rows one through four where we did two decreases on row one, purled back. We did one decrease on this side of row three and purled back. So that's rows one through four. Now the pattern will tell you to repeat rows one through four a certain number of times more. So make sure that's in addition to what you've already done ending after a wrong side row, and then it'll give you a stitch count. So you're gonna repeat rows one through four, where you do two decreases on the first row, so I'd start with the row one again, and then one decrease on a row three, purling back on the wrong side. So I'll meet you back here once I have completed the number of decreases and the number of rows that I'm supposed to for my side. So just know again, there will be a steeper decrease on this side, on the right side of the work here. And then on the left side of the work over here, this is not as steep of a decrease because this is where the V-neck is. All right, now I'm at the point where I've completed my left front decreases for both the underarm and the v-neck at the same time for the number of times I'm supposed to. Remember the pattern will tell you to do complete row through four and then complete row through four for a certain number of times more. So make sure that you include that in addition to the first row one through four group and then it'll give you a stitch number that you should have at the end of that. And now the pattern says you've completed the underarm decreases and now we'll just complete the decreases for the V-neck. So we are done doing the underarm decreases. So now the work will just go straight here and this will mimic what the back looks like at this point. So it should mimic what the back looks like. So now we're just going to be going straight up on the underarm section, but we need to continue the V-neck decreases. So all we're going to do now is on row one of this section is knit two, three stitches before the end. All right, I'm three stitches before the end now. And now we're just going to do a knit two together and knit one. So we're continuing our V-necks every other, our V-neck decrease every other right side row. So you turn the work and purl back for your row two. Finish the row two, we're gonna turn the work. Row three is just a knit row, so you're just gonna knit to the end. All right, I've knit all the way across for a row three. I'm gonna turn the work and just purl to the end for a row four. All 
So I've just completed rows one through four, and now the pattern will tell you to continue rows one through four a certain number of times more. Again, you've completed it once, so make sure you complete it a certain number of times more. So you can see now we're starting to go straight, that we have no more decreases at the underarm, and we're continuing this decrease at the V-neck every other right side row. So continue on and end after a row four until your pattern tells you to. So continue repeating rows of one through four the number of times more the pattern tells you to. All right, so now I've completed rows one through four the number of times I'm supposed to complete them for my size. I have the number of stitches I'm supposed to have left for my size. So now you can see we stop decreasing on this side and we have it go straight. And then the V-neck is a gradual decrease. So now your pattern will tell you to complete stack a net stitch for a certain number of rows more. Basically you just, you wanna make sure the back and the front length is about the same. So for my pattern and my size, I'm supposed to knit about four more rows here and I'm gonna just make sure that that length matches with what I knit to for the back and then I'm gonna bind off. All right, I just finished. So the length I'm supposed to finish to, it's looking pretty even with my back here. If you're a little off, it's not that big a deal. The, the biggest thing you want to remember is that you want to complete the left and the right front um, to the same length, too. So um, you're going to want to bind off just like we did before on the right side. You just knit two stitches and start binding off, lifting that stitch over. And you're going to do this all the way across again. All right, you work that last stitch, bind off, cut a tail, and then you can pull the yarn through and finish off your edge here. And now we will get ready to knit the right front. So now you're going to take your needles and we're gonna start working our right front and we need to place the remaining stitches for our right front back on to our needles. So I'm going to stick the end of this needle on firmly to my extension cord and I am going to gently pull this through here. All right, so I've got all my stitches back on the needle. I'm gonna remove my knitting extension cord here, and I'm going to join the work on the right side of the work at the center of the V-neck. So this is the center of the V-neck right here. So we're gonna join the work. And basically this side is done, it's basically just a mirror to the left side. So we're gonna be working decreases every other right side row at the V-neck at the beginning of the row this time instead of the end of the row. And working the underarm decreases at the end of the row this time instead of at the beginning. So if you just follow your directions, you're gonna start by Knitting one. We knit one and then we do our slip one, knit one, pass the stitch, slip stitch over. And then we're going to knit to eight stitches before the end. All right, when I have eight stitches left, two, four, six, eight, I'm going to knit two together and knit to the end. So that is row one of our four row repeat here where we are decreasing every other right side row at the v-neck and every right side row at the underarm. Row two, you simply purl back. All right, finishing my row two here, purling back. You can 
tighten that stitch where you joined. Turn the work in a row three. We don't need to do our decrease at the v-neck since we did one on the right side the last time around, but we need to do our decrease at the end of the row. So we are just simply going to knit across until we have eight stitches left. All right, and when you have eight stitches left, you do your knit two together and you knit to the end. So now I've just finished row three and I'm gonna turn the work and just pearl back for row four. All right, I'm finishing up a row four here. So now I've completed rows one through four and you're gonna repeat rows one through four for the number of times your pattern calls for, same number of times you did initially on the left front. So now you can see we're starting to create the V-neck here and the underarm decrease over here, right here. So you're gonna continue on and do the number of decreases um, your pattern tells you to for your size. All right, so now I have finished the underarm and V-neck decrease section. You can see my v-neck side here, my underarm decrease side here. Now I am going to just complete decreases for the v-neck. So it's again very similar concept to what we did on the other side. We just need to have the decrease at the beginning of the row instead of the end of the row. So the right side is just knit one, slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over, and knit to the end. So that's that row one. And then you are going to purl back for a row two. Then you will knit across for a row three and purl back for a row four. So that is your four row repeat for the V-neck decrease section of your vest. So I will see you back here when I have completed the number of decreases I'm supposed to complete for my size. Remember you repeat rows one through four until you get to the stitch count that you're supposed to have and it'll tell you complete rows through four um, a certain number of times more than you've already knit. So make sure you've got that correct and it's not total decreases. So, I will see you back here after I've completed the v-neck decreases. All right, so now I have finished my v-neck and I'm gonna continue knitting stockinette stitch straight for the number of rows that my pattern calls for just like I did on the other side. And then I'm just gonna bind off exactly how I bound off over here. So I'm not gonna show you everything, but I'll see you back here when I have finished my right front and it's it'll be time to seam up the shoulders. All right, I've got my left and my right front finished. Now it's time to seam the shoulders. If you have a long enough tail, um, great to use. I'm actually gonna just use a separate piece of yarn to seam and I'm gonna start by seaming the right front here and it's always great to start seaming from the outside in. That way you don't end up with like a mismatch end. So I'm gonna start seaming the right front. I'm gonna start with a piece of a yarn and weave that through my tapestry needle here and then I'm going to basically, I'm gonna try to just have this here so you can see. So I'm just gonna like basically connect by putting the yarn through. Let me make sure you guys can see this, okay. I'm just gonna connect by putting my needle through the end here. I'm gonna pull this through, leave a little tail here, and just connect it on this side too. Okay, now I'm ready to start seaming. I'm gonna pull this tighter here. So basically all I do is I go through, let me make sure this is not, I go through the bottom V on the top 
okay. Okay, so I went through the bottom V on the top, and now down here I see um, where I came through before, and I am just going to go through an upside down V, an upside down V here. Okay. So I go through an, a V that's right side up here on the top and a V that's right that's upside down on the bottom. And this is what kind of creates this like seamless look, the seamless knit look. And you just keep working all the way across doing that same thing. So you can see where you came out before. So you're going to go through the next one. Upside down V on the bottom. And again, this creates kind of a seamless look all the way across. Okay, finishing up here. I am almost done. You know, everybody always complains about seaming, but it really isn't that difficult. <laughs> I promise. And I'm just gonna finish the last one here and pull it through the back. And let go. And then I've got my great seam now. Okay, so just do the same thing on the other side and make sure you start from the outside of the work and work in. Now it's time to knit the V-neck collar and I am going down in my needle size to a 4.5 millimeter 24 inch circular needle so that I can knit in the round comfortably um, with the ribbing. And we go down a needle size for the ribbing to just help tighten up the stitches to make it look a little cleaner and neater. If you don't have the next size down and you don't want to purchase needles the next size down, feel free to use the same size needles. It just might not look quite as clean and neat. Um, if you're a tighter knitter, then it might look fine, but the pattern tells you to just go down in a needle size. So we are going to start by picking up stitches. I'm going to turn the work here so I can pick up stitches. We're going to start in the middle of the back. We're going to pick up a stitch for every stitch because we're knitting horizontally to the work here. Then we're going to go down the left front and pick up three stitches for every four rows here, three stitches for every four rows coming up the right side, and then one stitch for every stitch coming back across the back. So we're going to start by picking up a stitch for every stitch in the middle of the back. It doesn't have to be like exactly here. But I'm just going to stick my needle in here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Stick my needle into the top stitch here. And I'm literally going to pick up a stitch by pulling the yarn up and over. And then pulling this stitch through that top stitch here. So I've just picked up and knitted a stitch. And I'm going to continue doing this all of the way across. And I'm going to make sure I pull the yarn up and over from underneath the needle and pull it through here. That way our stitches are facing the right direction when it's time for us to knit. So you just keep working all the way across, picking up, picking up these stitches as you go. So I'm going to pick up stitches all the way across the back here and I'll meet you here and show you how to pick up three stitches for every four rows down the left front. All right, I finished picking up stitches across the back here. Now I'm going to pick up three stitches for every four rows horizontally to the work because basically our rows are a little bit longer. So if we picked up a stitch for every stitch, we would have too many stitches and the work wouldn't lay flat. So we have to skip some stitches in order to help the ribbing look great and lay flat. So to pick up three stitches for every four rows, you're basically going to be working in that last stitch here 
And we are going to start by inserting the needle like that on the side. One, I'm gonna go into the next one right here. Two, three, and then I'm gonna skip a row. Four, so I'm not gonna go into this one, I'm gonna go into this one. And I keep repeating that. One, two, three, skip a row, four. So repeat that all the way down the left front. So I've worked picking up stitches all the way down this left front and I wanna make sure I show you how to pick up that center stitch just so you make sure it looks good at the bottom of the V-neck. So I'm about right here and I'm gonna pick up one more stitch on the side here and then I'm gonna pick up the center V-neck stitch right here. And pull that through. Okay, now I'm gonna turn and work up the right front, picking up the same number of stitches, three stitches for every four rows. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, skip a row, four. So I'm gonna continue picking up stitches all the way up to the back here. Okay, I've picked up stitches all up the right front, and now I'm just going to pick up stitches, the rest of the stitches across the back. You're gonna to want to make sure that all of the stitches, including that center V-neck stitch down here, are even. Um, and I can show you how to fix that if so you don't have to count like the first we're going to be doing a one by one rib so i can show you how to make sure you have an even number of stitches on the first round so you don't have to count right now you just correct it towards the end of the round with a knit two together so that's just a little trick um, we'll see how many stitches i've picked up and if i need to do a knit two together but i'll show you where to do it if i've randomly picked up an even number of stitches okay so again, across the back, it's one stitch for every stitch because we're working horizontally with the work. So we wanna make sure we have a stitch for every stitch here. So I'm just about finished with this, picking up my stitches. So I've got all my stitches picked up. I'm at basically the beginning of the round. I'm going to place a stitch marker now to denote the beginning of the round and I'm simply going to start knitting a one by one rib. So we're just going to knit one and you can pull that tail a little bit to tighten up the stitch. Purl one, knit one, purl one. And then I'm going to show you what to do. So we're going to continue this and when we get as I work and I get close to the bottom of the v-neck, I'm gonna show you what to do to knit that mitered v-neck decrease. We're actually gonna be decreasing two stitches at the v-neck here to create that really cool mitered v-neck look. So I'm gonna work around and I'm gonna stop right before it's time to work that mitered v-neck. One thing you're gonna to wanna to do before you work all the way down there is mark that center v-neck stitch with a removable stitch marker. So I'm going to place a removable stitch marker there. So I know, because we're gonna work all the way around and stop one stitch before this stitch. So right here. Okay, so I'll see you once I've worked all the way up to this point. We've worked until one stitch before that center stitch marker. It doesn't matter if you're on a knit or a purl stitch with your ribbing doesn't matter. You're going to complete the center decrease the same way no matter what. You're going to slip these next two stitches. So this what this first one you're slipping here is that center v-neck stitch. This first one you're slipping is that center v-neck stitch. So you're slipping these two stitches as if to knit. 
you're going to knit the next stitch no matter what you always knit this next stitch and then you're going to pass those two slip stitches back over the stitch you just worked so this can be tricky and then you just drop those two stitches so we have just decreased two stitches we've just decreased two stitches here and we've got this mitered v-neck going on here with two de decreases right at that center stitch now we're going to complete one by one rib and um, all the way back around and now just note that the first stitch after the decrease should be the same stitch you completed right before the decrease so if i have a purl here i'm going to purl i'm going to purl now right after so purl one knit one purl one so i purled right before i made the miter decrease i purled right here made the decrease i'm going to purl again so now you're just going to complete one by one rib all the way around and then i'll show you what to do if you don't have an even number of stitches once i get back to the beginning of round marker because we because i actually haven't counted how many stitches i've picked up but it's an easy fix after you complete, you, you just fix it on your first round of one by one rib. It's a great little trick, nothing fancy. Okay, I'm almost to my beginning of round marker here and I'm noticing that I did not pick up an even number of stitches. So when I get to about three stitches left, I'm gonna just, so I just finished a purl stitch this should be knit, purl, knit. I don't want to end on a knit. If I have an even number of stitches, I should be ending with a purl because my first stitch is a knit. So when I have three stitches left and it's time for me to make a knit stitch, see I just completed a purl, I'm going to just knit two stitches together. And that takes care of the problem. And I'm going to end with a purl stitch and now I have an even number of stitches. So you just slip the stitch marker and continue working the one by one rib. I'm gonna show you how to work that miter decrease, center decrease again once I work all the way around just so you can see it one more time. All right, I've stopped knitting the ribbing one stitch before the center v-neck stitch. I'm going to slip these two stitches together as if to knit. I'm going to knit the next stitch and then I'm going to pass those two slip stitches back over the stitch I just worked and drop those. So there, I've got my nice mitered v-neck. I'm gonna check and see which stitch I just completed right before. Yep, and that was a knit stitch, so this should be a knit stitch over here. Knit one, purl one. And then I'm gonna continue doing this all the way around. All right, so you're gonna continue doing this until your work reaches just about an inch and a half or so, just under an inch and a half. And then, oh, you know what? Scratch that. You're gonna continue doing the one by one rib um, for a total of nine rounds. And then you're gonna bind off in the pattern, including this decrease, this center decrease in that pattern. So I'm gonna continue knitting so I have nine rounds total, and then I'll show you how to bind off in the established pattern, including this mitered v-neck decrease, okay? So I'll see you back here after I've knit nine rounds. Okay, I have finished my nine rounds. You can see my mitered v-neck. Now I'm gonna bind off, and we're gonna just do a standard bind off. Feel free to bind off however you'd like. There's many different ways to bind off. I'm just showing you standard bind off um, just for beginner knitters. And um, this is just a little more simple and straightforward. Some people do say it can be a little tight, tighter. So you can make sure you bind off a little more loosely if you want. Um, but I'm gonna work this until I get to the mitered v-neck and I'll just show you how to bind off in the mitered v-neck once I get to that 
uh, one stitch before that center stitch. All right, here we are. I've bound off all the way up until I am one stitch before that mitered v-neck stitch center stitch so I'm just going to continue working as I normally do knit um, slip two stitches as if to knit knit the next stitch pass those slip stitches over and then when I have two stitches on my right hand needle I'm going to just bind off that stitch and then I just continue working and binding off as I go and we are binding off in the pattern so that's what the v-neck looks like as you bind off now so you're just going to continue all the way around but and finish binding off for the v-neck i finished my neckline ribbing here i'm just removing my now i'm going to just connect the beginning and the end. I'm just going to weave in the ends here. Go back through this side and then follow one leg up. got the v-neck complete it's time to work the armhole ribbing now and I'm taking my 24 inch 4.5 millimeter needles I'm going to start on the right side doesn't matter which one you start at and you're going to just be picking up stitches starting at the underarm and working your way up all the way around join in the round and do the ribbing so same thing we did before but we are working just perpendicularly to the work so we are only going to be picking up three stitches for every four rows as we work this one two three skip a row four one, two, three, skip a row, four. So you're going to continue picking up stitches all the way around. And then I'll just show you how to join in the round here because it's a little bit different since we're working perpendicularly, per, since we're working perpendicularly to the work. Um, I'll just show you a different way to join in the round here. All right, so I'm about to join in the round after picking up my stitches here for my underarm, my armhole ribbing. And to join in the round, I'm simply going to take the first stitch. I'm going to hold the tail here with my right hand because it can get a little difficult. Basically, I'm going to like twist these two stitches over each other. So I'm going to move the left first stitch from the left needle over to my right. I'm going to move my first stitch from my left from my right needle over to my left. I'm going to twist that one stitch and just place my beginning of round marker here. And then I'm just going to start doing my knit one, purl one. So the armhole ribbing is a little different. It's one row shorter. So you're going to knit eight rounds of this and then bind off on the ninth round with the v-neck. We did nine rounds and bound off on the 10th round. So just pay attention to that. All right. So that's how you do the armhole ribbing and just bind off the same way. And remember, you're going to do these the same thing for both sides. All right, so the sweater is done. I have completed the armhole ribbing on both sides. And now you can just weave in the ends. You can take your tapestry needle and weave in the ends. Um, I showed you how to do it on the ribbing. You, you can um, continue doing that on the ribbing. And then if you have any extra tails, you can 
ends, you can just weave those in like, along the seam with your tapestry needle. I hope you guys enjoyed making the sweater vest with me. I hope you absolutely love your sweater vest and you wear it all the time. And I will see you in the next project. Take care.